I'm Gabriela Fresquez for Radar 2021. Every year on October 31st, Americans spend billions of dollars on elaborate costumes, spooky decorations, and satiating the sweet tooth of trick-or-treaters. Because nothing says quality parenting like exposing the kiddos to nightmare-inducing lawn mannequins or accepting Skittles from strangers on a dimly lit block. A different holiday rooted in exploring the boundaries between the living and the dead, however, is Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, a celebration that some mistakenly refer to as the Mexican Halloween. What does Halloween mean to you? So I'm a witch. For me, Halloween is just like the end of the year celebration. It's the last harvest. It's like the witch's new year. Pumpkins. Trick or treating, like candy. So it's like a good reason to get spooky and like try, if you want to, to reach out to your ancestors. Halloween's my favorite holiday. For me, it's just a cool day to spend with my family, my wife, you know, and just like enjoy watching the kids have fun and stuff like that. Have you ever heard of Day of the Dead and what do you think about it? Dia de los Muertos. Day of the Dead is a celebration where they're able to talk to any family that's passed on that's no longer in the world, in this world. It, I think it, it has to do with like the spirits going back to the underworld. Um, but Day of the Dead, that's a Mexican holiday, yes? Um, I've yeah, heard of I've it, heard but it. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't really know the meaning I'm, behind yeah. it. Uh, yeah, I've heard of it. Um, it's pretty cool to watch physically in the culture and watch how people, you know, like, you know, remember their family members and stuff like that. It's a lot different from what we do for Halloween though, for sure. A lot more about your ancestors and your heritage, a little bit less about candy. <laughs> While the two holidays have similarities, Halloween and Dia de los Muertos are fundamentally different. Halloween focuses on the living and thrives on our fear of mortality. Hence our obsession with horror films featuring knife building psychopaths or visiting locales where the threat of evil spirits is all around. People come here to learn about the witch trials and because of the witch trials of eight months in 1692, Salem has a reputation for being haunted. Our popularity as witch city only goes back to about the 1980s, believe it or not. In the 60s and 70s, Bewitched was filmed here. And that actually is the beginning of when we started to become a tourist destination. I think they enjoy the history and I think they also get a kick out of the uh, ghost stories as well, including the uh, Lady in Black over at the Joshua Ward House. Well, Stacey Schiff refers to the Salem Witch Trials as America's pre-national tragedy, our tiny reign of terror. This tour in particular, it's a little off the beaten path. Like I said at the beginning, it's an R-rated tour. We don't allow children under 13 on it. Um, and it gives you stories that you might not know. Why did these people do what they did? Why did they see what they said they saw? Why did we end up executing 20 of our Massachusetts citizens for the crime of witchcraft in a single summer of 1692? So there, there's some fairly unique stories on it, and I kind of let my freak fly, flag fly a little bit, as you've seen. I, I work some humor into it. And I really do want everybody to have a good time, and I like to think that they do. Unlike Halloween, Dia de los Muertos focuses on honoring the dead rather than fearing them. We have a huge Latin community, Mexican-American, South American community, and my sister Daisy and Tyler saw the importance of teaching or showing the people in Los Angeles about this incredible, beautiful Day of the Dead, which is a sacred day for us Latinos. Day of the Dead is a window that opens between the dead and the living, and that's when we are able to visit with our loved ones. That's the reason why we bring them their favorite food, their favorite music, their favorite whatever they loved while they were with us. So back in 1999, Tyler and Daisy started this event. The first year we had like 350 people. 21 years later, we have an attendance of about between 40 to 50,000 people. They will expect to see the altars, the people offering their uh, ofrendas to their loved ones. They will expect to see dancers, Aztec dancers. We are gonna have some stages with uh, performers. A lot of people will dress up like uh, Katrinas. We have face painting. It's a beautiful day to celebrate our loved ones. We are thrilled to be able to do it again this year. The theme is Quetzalcoatl. If we go back to the Aztecs and the Mayans, again, it, it takes roots way back then. It's the Quetzal bird 
that rises from the ashes, but it rises from the ashes in the form of a serpent. And it's symbolic because we wanted to create some kind of a theme that we represent as a community, as the whole world. We're rising from the ashes and reinventing ourselves again. My name is Ricardo Soltero, and I am a costume and set designer. I'm in charge of all the decorations uh, from the entrance throughout the cemetery and the stages. This year, we're, we celebrate the return of Quetzalcoatl. Behind me, it's a new piece. It's, a, it's the, the God of Death, Tlantecutli, de acuerdo a la cultura azteca or Nahuatl. This year, we're doing a very special celebration because we want the Latino communities like Guatemala and Salvador to be part of it, because they celebrate in a different way, and we want them to be part of it. The most important elements to be represented in an ofrenda are uh, earth, fire, wind, and water. The water is represented with a glass of water of the tequila or the beer. The air is represented with a papel picado. Also, we can add as a fifth element the marigolds, because it's the smell that attracts the spirits, trespass the underworld and come in celebrate with us. My first memories about Day of the Dead were with my grandmother when I was about eight, seven, eight years old. Myself and two of my cousins used to help her to cut. She had all these uh, patterns to make paper flowers and make these huge garlands. Most of the pieces are made out of paper mache. As you can see at this piece, it's made out of all of paper mache. Even the movie Coco was inspired by what we do in Hollywood Forever. I always wait to see all the credit and there was a big thank you to Hollywood Forever for being the inspiration of the movie. For that, I, get, I still get the chills because I am part of it and it meant a lot to me. While the origins of Halloween have Celtic roots, Dia de los Muertos has a mixture of Aztec and Catholic origins. Dia de los Muertos, we celebrated on November 1st and the 2nd. Uh, the first uh, being for Dia de los Inocentes, or the children, and the second for, uh, for all other um, deaths, right? And it's to coincide with El Día de Todos los Santos, with the with the Catholic Church. Growing up, I just thought, oh, it's um, Día de los Muertos was a celebration that kind of just merged with the Catholic uh, traditions because it just worked out so beautifully. But depending on who uh, really is telling the story, right? We see this this idea again of the colonizer, the conqueror, being the one who. Um, who controls that narrative. Now we see the sugar schools at Trader Joe's and Walmart. And again, it's like, oh, well, it's Halloween. It's Mexican Halloween. And it's again, that erasure of, of people and traditions and rich culture. It, this is happening again, you know, people taking over something that's rich, beautiful, simplifying, oversimplifying it really, and calling it something else, absorbing it and kind of uh, taking its meaning away. La Catrina has become one of the most recognizable symbols of the Mexican holiday. Created in the early 1900s by Jose Guadalupe Posada and intended to be a satirical caricature, La Catrina is based on the queen of the Aztec underworld. Since I was very little, I've, I was thought to love and cherish and respect and practice my traditions, my culture. I was born and raised in Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. And when I came to the US, I had the need of belonging. So I started um, connecting with my community and my people. Ricardo Soltero actually invited me a few years ago to be a Katrina, and I loved it. Before, it was just, you know, during Day of the Dead season, but then last year, after COVID hit, you know, um, there was a need of creating something new. Every time that I dress as a Katrina, I have a huge responsibility because I am representing the culture and tradition of a whole country. And I'm also wearing uh, designer pieces and you know, the art of a makeup artist, uh, accessories, everything. You know, La Catrina Andante actually, um, I become kind of like the soul of the place that I go to. For example, I went to Puebla where the Talavera is very popular. So I, I became like a piece of the a Talavera. Then I went to Michoacán and I became a Mariposa Monarca. The piece that I'm wearing today represents love. It's love for the people that are no longer with us and love, it's unity. As a Mexican, it's amazing to see how people from other ethnicities celebrate this tradition with all the respect, you know? I think it's just very mysterious the way that 
we Mexicans celebrate death, we cherish, we think that we had these people that are no longer with us to, to be a part of our lives. Another Dia de los Muertos tradition with Aztec roots, still practiced today, is the consumption of pan de muerto, which literally means bread of the dead. A sweet treat often left graveside as an ofrenda or offering to dead relatives. Originally, part of the dessert's recipe included actual human blood. Fortunately, that custom is also dead. From the ofrendas to the flowers, Dia de los Muertos is rich with all kinds of symbolism for honoring the departed. As preparations for Dia de los Muertos in Sioux, I'm going to be taking you to some of the most significant places in Oaxaca where they happen. Panteón General is a historic cemetery that is central to celebrating Dia de los Muertos right here in Oaxaca, but due to COVID, it will be closed on the day of the holiday. Although the spirit is definitely different, it's totally here. Meet Bowler. He is responsible for many of the murals around the historical neighborhood of Jaraclaco as Dia de los Muertos preparations are underway. So, háblame. Soy artista visual. Todo el significado, las, los, los iconos que convergen, los, toda la simbología prehispánica también que hay alrededor del Día de Muertos es lo que yo plasmo, pero también hibrido esos personajes o esa iconografía con el mezcal, que es una parte fundamental de la tradición del Día de Muertos. Mis trabajos pictóricos en las paredes de Oaxaca hablan de lo mismo, son ofrendas para ellos, el colibrí, el murciélago, que son polinizadores del maguey, los vuelvo calaveras. Es un trabajo colaborativo porque los vecinos me han, me han abierto las puertas de su casa, donde ellos también participan en mis murales y podemos hacer un trabajo muy bonito en comunidad y la gente se apropie de esos murales. In Mexico, marigold, also known as cempasuchil, is the flower of choice when it comes to altars for Day of the Dead. This flower's fragrance is said to attract souls to the altar, along with its bright colors. Fields like these are popping up all over Oaxacan State. Día de Muertos son días de visitar las tumbas, lavarlas, poner flores, hacer comida. O sea que es como una fiesta. Aquí en Mitla nosotros tenemos la característica muy especial de que el pan de muerto eh, tiene una, una forma muy peculiar de forma alargada. La cabecita es la que representa la, la cara del muerto. Este, el pan aquí en Mitla en sí representa este, cada uno de nuestros difuntos. En nuestros altares debemos de poner de acuerdo a la cantidad de, de personas o de, de seres queridos que ya no estén. Eh, si tenemos dos o tres seres queridos que ya no estén, ponemos dos o tres panes de los más grandes en el altar, representativos de cada uno de ellos. La pintura es a base de agua con harina y se pintan diferentes este, estilos y diseños. Antes este, no, no dejaban que las mujeres entraran en las panaderías, eh, pero ahorita este, las mujeres han salido muy adelante en esa parte. Eh, hemos tenido ese valor de decir, no, pues, nosotras también podemos hacer el pan. Pues tengo más que nada esa, esa responsabilidad y preparándome más que nada para seguir con esa tradición del pan y no dejar que se pierda. Dia de los Muertos has also given a vehicle to activists wanting to honor the lives of not just family members, but victims of femicide. In Mexico City, following celebrations in 2019, demonstrators marched on behalf of Dia de Muertas, or Day of the Dead Women, calling for an end to the violence. Halloween capitalizes on gore, a fear of, of death and a fear of the unknown. Dia de los Muertos, on the other hand, is a celebration of life, and really understanding that our life is a cycle and that we cannot have life without death. But Mexico isn't the only Latin American country that celebrates Dia de los Muertos. Other countries celebrate similar versions of the holiday as well. Every November 2nd, for example, Ecuadorans celebrate Dia de los Difuntos, or Day of the Deceased. Family and friends remember their loved ones, often gathering at cemeteries to share meals with the departed, including guaguas de pan, or bread babies. Some say guaguas represent the deceased, and that eating them is a way of remembering. Others say they're based on the indigenous belief that when a person dies, they retain their innocence. Another day of the deceased tradition is rooted in communing with dead family members 
through a game of dice known as Birurui, where the dice are made from llama bones and the purpose is to resolve family conflicts, which I'm assuming is because in some families to settle an argument, at least one of you's gotta be dead. Relatable. Further south in Peru, citizens celebrate El Dia de los Santos y Fieles Difuntos. They even have their own version of bread babies called Tanta Wawa. We celebrate two days, the first and the second of November. First, we go to mass. Then we have a big banquet with everything that our loved ones liked. And then we do at night a candlelight vigil that second of November, we have to go to the cemeteries. You go in front of the tomb of your loved one and you put flowers, you clean it, you dance, you play music the music that your loved one liked, and we decorate absolutely everything. Over in Bolivia, the country's second largest indigenous group, the Aymara, honor their dead through Dia de las Niatitas, which literally translates to Day of the Pug-Nosed Ones, with the pug nose referring to human skulls. Participants gather human skulls either by digging up graves or removing skulls already enshrined in their homes and take them to the cemetery where they pray, sing, and dance in celebration. You heard that correctly. Although the tradition sounds morbid in some cultures, Bolivians interpret this practice as facing mortality with joy rather than fear. Central America has its own unique traditions revolving around Day of the Dead, known locally as Dia de los Difuntos. On November 1st, the date that coincides with All Saints Day in Catholicism, the village of Tonocatepeque in El Salvador celebrates a festival called La Calaviusa. Unlike Halloween, kids here don't dress up as superheroes or princesses. Instead, they dress up as mythical creatures like El Cadejo or La Ciguanaba, supernatural characters based on folklore indigenous to Central America. Revelers in Tonocatepeque party into the night and enjoy a dessert called ayote miel, made up of pumpkin and honey. On that same night, the indigenous village of Nahuizalco in El Salvador celebrates Dia de los Canchules. There, people make elaborate altars in honor of their deceased relatives, similar to traditions in Mexico. In Guatemala, colorful kites soar over the neighboring towns of Santiago Zacatepeques and Zumpango, the giant kites are known as barriletes gigantes. The festival and the weaving of the kites is rooted in Mayan traditions. Los barriletes son para para llevar mensajes a nuestros a nuestros abuelos, a nuestros difuntos hacia el cielo. Es, es algo que, que no se puede expresar con palabras. Ajá. Es algo que, que se siente aquí. On the actual day of the dead, on November 2nd, Many people across Central America spend the day at the grave sites of their deceased loved ones, dress up their graves with fresh flowers, and sing songs all to honor their memory. When it comes to commercializing Halloween in the U.S., we've got that on lock. American retailers rake in billions every Halloween season between candy, decorations, and costumes. And there's a reason for Hollywood's obsession with scary movies. It's the most profitable genre. As Americans, we love a psychologically disturbing ghost story. In fact, if a horror film about someone's demonically possessed doll doesn't cripple me with fear and anxiety by the time the credits roll, I don't want it. And when it comes to commercializing Dia de los Muertos, Disney Pixar's animated film Coco has been extremely effective at doing just that. Coco received rave reviews from Latinx critics for its authenticity, depth, and ability to make even the most cynical among us ugly cry in some very, very public pre-COVID movie theaters. My name is Ana Ramirez Gonzalez and I'm an artist at Pixar. I was like very, very inspired by Day of the Dead um, throughout my life because it's a huge celebration in Mexico. So I, I felt very lucky to be part of this project. A lot of research, go research goes into this job, um, but especially for this film, like I felt like it was super, super important that, you know, things were accurate and like true to life and authentic and respectful too, because it was like a cultural film, right? Um, and especially me as like a Mexican person, like I wanted to make sure that I was like making people proud. People thought it was like a big risk. It's like the first big like Pixar cultural film. Um, and some people thought that it, it wouldn't resonate with people because it was so specific. It's had kind of like the opposite effect where like it made people interested more in like Mexican culture and the celebration and it's amazing because I do really feel like 
this film has like brought people together. I think made some people realize like, oh, we have more in common with this culture than we might think. It makes me happy also that it's something that can keep coming back and that people will rewatch every year. I'm Renee Victor, and I characterize the voice of Abuelita in the Oscar-winning film Coco. My family was very Catholic. However, Halloween was Halloween, and that was fun and costumes. Also, in the church, El Dia de los Santos. One was religious, the other was very American. We were aware of the celebration that took place in Mexico culturally, but we actually did not have the altar and all of the accoutrements that go with the celebration of El Dia de los Muertos. We all saw a movie that profoundly touched all of us. And the significance of what the film has instilled in all of the different races and cultures is just so enormous that uh, it makes you stand back and say, wow, that's what I have gathered that touches me the most and profoundly makes me proud of my culture. Even though I was, I was not born in Mexico, but look at how that movie has helped to spread that culture around the Americas for all the cultures and all the races. The popularity of Coco has no doubt raised the profile of Mexican culture across North America. And it poses the inevitable question of whether the adoption of Dia de los Muertos into mainstream American holiday culture is appreciative, appropriative, or both? But if there's one Day of the Dead tradition that can't be commercialized, it's the custom of writing calaveras literarias, aka short poems that satirize the living or poke fun of the dead. La Catrina festejaba desde Radar Telemundo, con Gaby Fresques hablando con un Spanglish profundo. Lo sorprendió la calaca preguntando a producción que a Mark Anthony buscaban para darle información. Mas llegaron al programa sin ninguna invitación, la calaca y la huesuda pa' llevarlas al panteón. Estaban las Saving Graces que con mucha precaución alertaron al equipo y a toda la producción. Así, dijo la huesuda a la audiencia de Radar, como estoy comprometida con esta comunidad, tengo espacios exclusivos y a todos quiero invitar. Que vengan a mi aposento por toda la eternidad. Dia de los Muertos has largely become rolled up into the Halloween retail juggernaut, with a full-scale commercialization of the former well underway. With that inevitability in mind, it's important to acknowledge the fundamental differences between the two holidays. Because I never thought anything could feel as equally cruel and amazing as threatening strangers with tricks in exchange for free Butterfingers until I found out about roasting the dead. I'm Gabriela Fresquez for Radar 2021. Thanks for watching Radar 2021. Please like, subscribe, and comment down below and let us know what issues are important to you. Because let's be honest, there are a lot of issues to choose from. <laughs> so, so many.